Hi, this is Robert Kane. In this video, we'll take a look at how to create Azure Resource Groups safely with PowerShell. A little about me, my name is Robert Kane. I'm the owner of Arcane Training and Consulting. I've been a Microsoft MVP since 2008 in the data platform space. Most of my work is as a course author for Pluralsight, an online video training company. I also write articles for Simple Talk, RedGate's community site for SQL Server. Additionally, I've co-authored five books and do a lot of public speaking. You can find all my information at arcanecode.me. Recently, I wrote an article for Simple Talk titled PowerShell Functions for Reusability and Restartability in Azure. In it, I describe how to craft your PowerShell code for both reuse and to have the ability to restart your entire script without concern as to where it may have been interrupted. I'll put a link to the original article in the description of this video, or you can find a link to all my articles at arcanecode.me. In this quick video, I wanted to focus on one topic from the article, creating resource groups in Azure safely. Before I start the demo, I just wanna show you where you can go find the sample code to download. You can find a link to my GitHub site from my arcanecode.me page, or you can just go to github.com slash arcanecode. Once here, go to my repositories, find the repository for my YouTube videos. And this particular video is Creating Azure Resource Groups Safely with PowerShell. In it, you'll find the various PowerShell files I used in this demo. Here I am inside the PowerShell IDE, and the first thing I do is I get a reference to the current folder where all of my scripts are stored at. And I keep mine stored in OneDrive, and these are coming out of one of my Pluralsight courses, Azure Demos Course 1. So once I set the variable, I simply set my location. And the next thing I'm going to do is part of the reusability that I talked about in my article. One of the ways you can achieve reusability with your code is through storing that code in a PS1 file that you can then reference from other PS1 scripts. So here I have several helper functions stored in a file called module-common.ps1. We'll look in there in just a second, but to actually run that script, I issue a dot command. The dot just says, I want you to go out and run this PowerShell code. And then to execute it, I have to give it the full path to that file, such as c colon backslash my files backslash module common ps1. There's a good little shortcut though, that if you're already in the folder where your file is stored at, you can simply use a period and then a backslash and then the name of the file. So to run this, we'll simply highlight it and we'll hit F8. By the way, if you look up here in the toolbar, the run selection, F8 is the shortcut for that. So rather than having to use the mouse to come up here and use the run selection each time, you can just hit the F8 key. So what's actually in this file? Let's take a quick look. And I've got some helper functions. Now I'm not going to go over every one of these. They'll be in the downloads. But these are just functions that make my life easier when working with Azure. For example, I've got one that says connect PS to Azure. This just runs the log me in Azure commandlet to log into Azure. I've got another one for setting what subscription I'm on. Then I've got the one that we're going to be looking at momentarily called new PS resource group. So let's come back here, here to my code. Now I'm going to call one of those helper functions to log me in if I need to. The next item I have is an issue that's probably common to you as well. It's common to a lot of people. And that is that they have multiple Azure subscriptions. Typically, when you have multiple Azure subscriptions, there's going to be certain variables you're going to set dependent upon that subscription. So what I did was I created another little helper file called module set common ps one. Let's take a quick look at it. And it's pretty straightforward. It's just a switch statement with the account that I want to use. And this is passed in from a parameter at the very top of the file. Then, depending upon which account was passed in, and this was just a two-character naming convention I came up with, you can use whatever you want. If it picked my AC, I would set these variables. The U sub is my Azure free trial subscription. Uh, PS uses my Pluralsight Azure content subscription. 
I've got another from my Visual Studio Ultimate with MSDN. If you've got an MSDN subscription, you should have access to some Azure credits each month. So take advantage of that. Go log into your MSDN and take a look around. And so again, depending upon which particular subscription I want to use, I set my use sub variable plus a few other variables, and then I can return to my main code. I'll need to set one other variable for working with this, and that is the location. When you create a resource group, it needs to know what location you want to put it in. For me, I'm closest to South Central US. So I'll just run these three lines of code. And then we're going to come down, and I've got a set PS subscription helper function. It's in the module common file that will set Azure to use the subscription that I want to use. And now we're finally getting into the real heart of this video and that is the creation of resource group. So first, let me show you a list of the resource groups that I currently have on my server. You can see I've got three. I've got one called Arcane FT Demo, another one for default SQL South Central US, another one called PSFT Demo. So how do we normally create a resource group in Azure? Well, Azure has something called the new Azure RM resource group commandlet. What you would do is I'm going to set a variable for my resource group name and then I'm going to call the commandlet. Now that little character at the very end, if you're not familiar with that, that's the backtick character. It's not a smudge on your screen. It's the line continuation character for PowerShell. And I use these because it makes the code much easier to read, especially on a small screen like we're doing for this video recording. So I would simply use new Azure RM resource group, give it the name of the location. And then we're going to call the get Azure RM resource group again to show us the list of groups. And sure enough, there's our new normal way RG. Okay, that's great. What if, say, our code crashes on the very next line and we need to go rerun the script to restart it, but we're not real sure where it stopped at? We, you know, it's not going to be real easy for us to determine the line of code that this thing bombed out at. So it'd be nice if we could just run the code again. What happens if we do? Well, if I run this again, now it interrupts me with this message. Hey, this resource group already exists. Are you sure you want to update it? Well, first of all, this interrupts the flow of my script. It means I've got to be sitting here looking at this to be able to say yes or no. And then I've either got to say, no, I don't want to update it, or I've got to say yes, in which case maybe I'm updating it needlessly. But I'm going to say no. Now, granted, I could probably have used something like a force switch to force it, but honestly, that's a little lazy. I don't want to have to force this every time and make needless updates to this resource group. So there's actually a better way to handle this. If I scroll down a little bit, you're going to see our way, and that is to use our new PS resource group commandlet. Now, this is actually the helper function that I've written. We'll look at it in just a second, but you can see I pass in the resource group name and the location, and note I'm using a verbose flag. I want to show you this. Now, this verbose flag will come into play as I run this. You can see there's my checking for resource group. Let me come down and scroll this up a little bit. I have my first message, checking for resource group, that I'm actually creating the resource group, and then I get another message from within one of the Azure commandlets that says it created the resource group. So I get three different messages. Well, what happens now if I run this again? Well, let's do so. Let's come up here and we'll click Run Selection. This time I get my first message, checking for resource group, and that's it. That's all it did. But the resource group does indeed exist. If I run my Git Azure RM resource group again, there is my new improved way resource group. So how did we achieve this? Well, let's come over here to our module common. And I'm going to full screen this so we can make it a little easier to see. In this function, we made it an advanced function by using commandlet binding. And I have two parameters, the resource group name and the location. And both have little help messages, and I use the flags to make them mandatory. I then come into my write verbose message, and I'm tell it I'm checking for the resource group. I want to see if that resource group exists first. Now, in the article, from Simple Talk, I actually described two different ways to handle this. So I've just shown them here. You'd only really want to use one of these in your actual code. In the first message, 
I'm going to call Get Azure RM Resource Group. I'm going to pass in the name of my resource group. Now, what will happen is if that resource group doesn't exist, Get Azure RM Resource Group will return an error, and that will bring my script to a crashing halt. Well, I don't want that. So what I can do is use, there's the line continuation character at the end again, and then I have an error action silently continue flag. And what this says is, hey, if there's an error, ignore it, just keep going. Well, in that case, the dollar sign RG exists variable will hold a null value. The advantage to using this method is it's fast. If you've got hundreds and hundreds of resource groups, then on the Azure side of things, it will do all the filtering to find out that that resource group either exists or doesn't, and then just return that small bit of information, either a reference to the resource group or a null, and stick it in the RG exists variable. The negative side is if there is an error other than doesn't exist, then it will mask that issue. So maybe you had a connectivity issue. Well, that's also going to generate an error, but this is going to ignore it. So if you're fairly certain that the only error you're going to get out of this is the resource group doesn't exist, error action silently continues a pretty quick way to go. But what if you're concerned that you could have other errors? Maybe you are in an area that has bad connectivity issues or just a myriad other issues that could occur. Well, for that, there's a second way we can handle this. In it, we're going to use the get Azure RM resource group commandlet again, but this time, we're not going to pass in any parameters. So what's going to happen is it's going to return a list of all of our resource groups. Now, if you only have a handful, not a big deal, but you know, maybe you've got hundreds of resource groups out there. Well, this is going to be a pretty big amount of data coming back across the internet. But we're going to take that data and we're going to pipe it through this next line of code, where object, and we're going to filter for just the particular resource group I'm looking for. If that resource group exists, then it will be returned in place in the RG exists variable. Otherwise, a null will be in the RG exists variable. So again, this has the advantage of not ignoring errors. The downside to this is you could potentially be returning a lot of data that you have to filter through on the client side. So plus and minuses, no matter which way you want to uh, do it, it just depends on how big of an issue you think errors could be when retrieving the list of resource groups. Either way you choose to do it, we're going to come down and we're going to see if that resource group exists. If it is equal to null, if that variable has nothing in it, we're going to write a verbose statement and then we're going to go out and call the new Azure RM resource group. But we're doing it this time with the confidence of knowing we have to do it because we know the resource group does not exist. And there you go. If I return to my original code, you can see I can call this function over and over again without being concerned about the resource group already existing or not. This also offers me some other flexibilities. Let's say I have two different script files. The first script file goes out and creates some Azure virtual machines. The second PowerShell script file goes out and creates some Azure SQL servers. Both scripts want to put these objects in the same resource group. Well, using this particular piece of code, the new PS resource group, I can put the creation of the resource group in both files. Then it doesn't matter which of the files I call first, whichever one runs it and says, oh, this resource group's not there, it'll create it. Then the second file, when it executes the code, it goes, oh, this already exists, I can just skip it and go on. So you gain a lot of flexibility, a lot of safety, a lot of restartability, all with this simple coding technique. So when we're done, I've got a little code here that will go clean up those resource groups after themselves. So while this runs, let me leave you with a few resources. As we close, I wanted to leave you with a few resources. If you want to learn more about PowerShell in general, I have a great course on Pluralsight called Beginning PowerShell Scripting for Developers. It assumes you know nothing about PowerShell and takes you all the way through advanced topics, such as developing shareable modules. 
you'll find it at bit.ly slash AC scripting. The Civil Talk article this video is based on can be found on their site at bit.ly slash acred01. You'll find it an excellent companion to this video. Finally, you can find more information on everything I do, including all my social media activity, on my website at arcanecode.me. Thanks for watching.